So you would like to make a heart mosaic using plates. Well, you're in the right place. I'm Helen Miles, and I'm here to teach you all the tips and tricks you need to make mosaics. For this project, I'm going to be using this MDF shape of a heart, which is five millimetres thick. Um, basically, any, if you go to any craft shop, you can find pretty much any shape or size you want. So it, this is just the shape that I've chosen, but there are lots of different options. And the nice thing about this, it's got this handy hole already punched in. So this is easy to hang. I've also got my wheeled nippers. We'll look at those a little later. And you need a selection of plates, bowls, cups, and anything broken. Um, or that you don't want to use anymore and any colours, just whatever suits you. And you need tile adhesive and pigment if you're going to add it. And finally, to start off with, you'll need some wood paint. And we'll look at the stuff that you need for sealing the wood in a minute. Let's start off by painting the back. Um, the edges of these kind of boards are this kind of burnt um, colour. So I don't think I'm going to bother to paint the edges. Um, and this is just an ordinary wood paint. And I'm just uh, putting on a quick layer. To seal your board, you're going to need PVA glue, just simple craft glue that you can get in any hobby shop. You're going to need um, rough sandpaper and a Stanley knife, utility knife. And this is just a little bowl and um, to mix the PVA with water and a brush to spread on the board. And the reason you have to seal it is because we're going to be using a tile adhesive paste on the board and that tile adhesive has water in it. So of course the wood would absorb the water and expand. So to avoid that, we're going to seal the board um, so that it, it's protected against the moisture in the tile adhesive. So I'm gonna rub the board with the, with the sandpaper. Wipe away the dust and you might want to mark the front of the board with an F or some other mark to indicate that that's the front. If you haven't painted it in the back already, it can get confusing. You can't necessarily tell immediately which side that you've sealed. Then I'm going to score it with my Stanley knife, just quickly, one way. one direction and then the other so I've got a kind of grid, grid scoring pattern on it and then I'm going to paint it with my PVA water mix just a single layer of plenty Before we go any further, a quick word about um, safety precautions. So we're going to be cutting plates and plates can be unpredictable in their cuts. So safety glasses are a really good idea. You can get them super cheaply at any hardware shop. You also need a dusk mask. Um, this is to filter out the silica, which occurs, um, the dust which is produced when you're cutting plates. So this is quite a fancy uh, dust mask, but you can get simpler ones. Just make sure that you can read on the manufacturer's details that it says that it will filter out silica. 
You'll also need the dust mask because we're going to be mixing tile adhesive um, thin set and that's a cement based compound so it produces dust. These are the bits of crockery that I'm going to be using. I've got this lovely Staffordshire blue bowl and, and also another bowl which has um, some very dark blue on it. And then I have this quite modern uh, bit of plate with, with some bright, brighter oranges on it. And I need some neutrals. So I've got a mixture of, of neutrals. Can you see when you put them together, they, they're both essentially cream, but when you can put, put them together, you can see that they're actually different shades. And that just makes the, the area which is going to be filled in with neutral more interesting to have different shades. But it's not essential, of course. Any of these three tools will do the trick for cutting plates. I'm going to be using these sea bells, which um, I acquired recently and I really love them. Sea bell mosaic tools, you'll find them online. You can equally well use these Montelit. They're very good too, and they have a nice close bite. And then at the cheaper end, you've got Lepinit. All of these nippers, all of these wheeled, double wheeled nippers will do the trick on plates. And I've done a separate video about the different nippers and their different qualities and properties, which I'll link um, in the description below. I have this lovely blue bowl and what I'm going to aim to do is to cut out some of the flowers around the rim. Um, I want to use the manufactured edge of the bowl against the cut edge of the heart. So I'm going to um, cut in like this. And where I place my blade is where hopefully the cut will be. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And then I'm going to nibble that down, placing the blade where I want the cut to be until I've, I've got the bit of the plate or bit of the bowl that I'm looking for. Let's do that again with this little flower here. One more. When you're using tile adhesive, it's um, a cement-based compound and it dries more or less as soon as you've mixed it. Mixed it. it dries slowly, obviously, but it's still starting the drying process. So it's pretty important to do as much of your cutting before you start laying as possible, especially with a project like this, where, well, in my particular case, I'm intending to have a blue rim around the edge of the heart and then I'm going to have neutrals with a bit of orange in the middle. So therefore, I want to make sure that I have enough of the blue rim pieces. So this is one I made a while ago, and you can see um, that I wanted to have these, these pink hearts around the edges. Um, and I thought I'd cut enough, but it's only when I got to here that I realised that I didn't have enough. So that's definitely something worth considering. Make sure that you've done your cutting, and you have enough pieces to do, to fill the design the way you intend it. I've also decided to go for pretty regular shapes around the edges. Uh, so they're fairly similar in size on this project. Whereas on this one, I've done irregular ones. And I think that's very effective too. Uh, the only kind of unifying principle in this one is that I put the gold rim of the plate along the manufactured edge of the board. But other than that, you can see all the shapes are different. Now I'm preparing my tile adhesive. So I put about six heaped uh, tablespoons of tile adhesive in this uh, plastic food bag. So tile adhesive, remember, is the same as thin set and you can buy it in any hardware shop. The one I'm using is called Bal Max Flex Fibre, 
but you'll probably have uh, ones uh, wherever you live which are which are just as good so just again check what it says on the outside of the packet to make sure it's suitable for the conditions that you're going to be using it in the reason why I put it in a plastic bag, um, I could also just put it in a, in a bit of Tupperware, is I'm going to mix some pigment into it. And I want to make sure that I have enough of uh, tile adhesive with pigment for the whole project. So if you're just mixing a batch for the particular project, then you could find that you've run out of it and then you'll have to mix a new batch and you'll have to add the pigment again. And it's quite difficult to get exactly the same ratios of pigment to thin set. So it's best to do it all together now and to have more than you need. And then uh, you'll never face the problem of having different shades of thin set within one project. So this is obviously dry powder and I'm going to add my powder pigment to it. So that's about half a teaspoon, I would say. Probably need a little bit more. The pigment that I, what I use is called Strong Black and it's made by Harriston in the UK. Um, you can also buy Thinset, which is pre-mixed. It already has the color in. Um, so it just depends how you like to do it. And now I've put the pigment in, I'm going to close the bag and mix it all up. If you're interested in ratios, you shouldn't use any more than 10% of dry pigment to thin set tile adhesive. I think I use considerably less there. I'm making this mosaic in a fairly cold studio in Scotland in the winter. So I'm going to add latex to my thin set. And the only reason that I'm doing this is it prevents efflorescence, that kind of uh, white bloom that appears on the top of the um, dry tile adhesive. Uh, and it's the salts that are coming up from from within. So um, this using latex, if you're working in cold conditions, really helps prevent that. So I'm going to use a 50-50 mix latex and water. So 50% latex, 50% water. If you're in uh, less cold conditions, um, there's no need to use latex. You can just mix your thin set with water. Now I'm going to mix my tile adhesive thin set. I've done a separate video on how to do that. So I'm just going to speed up this section. And I also want to wear my dust mask when I'm making it. Um, so I won't be able to speak to you. But essentially what I'm doing is putting some of the mixture, some of the pigmented mixture into my mixing container and then slowly adding the latex water mix until I get a thick paste, sort of like a peanut butter paste. There we go, there's my thick paste. As you can see, it's very malleable, but it's also quite, well, thick. Um, the other point to consider is, of course, you don't have to add pigment. This is just my, my individual choice. So you could just use the white tile adhesive thin set as it is when you buy it, or as I said, buy pre-mixed um, tile adhesive with uh, pigment in it. I'm now ready to start mosaicing my board. So the other thing I forgot to mention that you'll need is a spatula, actually a kitchen knife, a normal knife, a domestic knife, table knife is what I mean, will also do the trick. And a bowl, obviously this is an old yogurt pot, a bowl to mix your tile adhesive in. So I'm going to take a little bit of the tile adhesive and spread it over the board. And I don't want to use too much in any given session because this stuff dries, once, especially once it's spread. So I'm constantly 
scraping the back of my spatula, but it can be your domestic knife, against my pot to, so that I can create a fairly flat, clean surface. And in terms of thickness, my, my pieces are, let's say, four to five uh, millimetres thick. So I want my tile adhesive to be at least half that depth. So I'm going to push my pieces in to at least half, perhaps even two thirds of their depth. So you can see on the edge of the board, I hope, can you see that? How deep it is. And then I'm going to start applying my pieces. And as I've said, as much as possible, I'm going to keep the manufactured, the smooth edge of the pieces against the smooth edge of the board. And I'm doing the corner first, because I want the corner to be nice and neat. And I'm laying the edge, the edge of the, the smooth edge of the piece right up against the edge of the board. I'm going to carry on laying my pieces like that. And in terms of distance, I, mean, I am leaving a little, little gap between them, uh, but not too much. Now I'm going to put more on this side and you're going to wonder why I just didn't continue along there. And that's partly because it's much easier if I can carry on holding it. And as soon as this bit is mosaic, it's much harder to hold because the, the tile adhesive will be squishy, so my thumb will be squishing down into it. The other reason that I want to do one section at a time, rather than move all around and then fill in, is because the filling in would be very difficult from the centre. To get the tile adhesive in from the centre, would be very hard to spread it evenly. So I'm going to do the edge and a little bit of the middle at the same time. Oops. And you can see I'm cleaning the edge with my finger every now and again, just to make sure that it doesn't squish out too much. Over the edge. That area doesn't have enough tile adhesive. So let's just leave that and add some tile adhesive here. And here, I'm just filling in a sort of crazy paving way. So a random, random setting. I'm pushing that down. I'm using my mixed creams, wipes. And it doesn't matter if you get tile adhesive on the front because we're using glazed ceramic, so it will easily wash off. It 
So it's actually harder than it looks to get the pieces in fairly regularly. I need a a long thin one for that and I don't I don't have one cut. So let me just cut one. There we are, well, we've done that section and then I'm going to work around this section now. I'm going to just put a nail in here, in the hole, the hanging hole, to make sure I don't accidentally fill that up. And just a word about stopping. So if you need to stop while you're, make, while you're using tile adhesive, then you have to clear away the excess because otherwise, obviously, all of this would harden and make it impossible to lay your next pieces. So using the flat side of your spatula, just pull it away. Not right close up, but fairly close up. And as you can see, I've also put this uh, on top of a little um, pot so that it's raised, so that um, obviously the tile adhesive is, is sticky. So if I, put, if I place the heart on the surface, it doesn't stick to the surface. Okay, I've had a little break and now this is rock solid. So in fact, that wasn't, that wasn't planned, but I had to stop what I was doing. Um, and I've come back and this is now solid and the nail, the screw is still removable. So that's good. Um, and because this is all solid, I'm just going to complete the rest of it in one go. A few points there. Those who were watching me closely would have seen that I had to take a piece out because I was wanted to balance the oranges. Um, so I took a plain piece out and put an orange piece in there. And that's perfectly fine. Um, you just use um, some angled tweezers like this and pick it out. Um, there are also some, some of the pieces are sets well embedded and some of them have still got kind of gaps between them. I mean, they're thoroughly embedded, but the tile adhesive hasn't come up to the surface. It isn't, it isn't flat with the surface. Uh, that's completely fine. This is not going to go outdoors. Um, but you can, of course, grout the piece at the end if you like. And the third point is that I've got quite a lot of tile adhesive on the front of these tiles. And that's going to rub off really easily once the tile adhesive is dry. Another quick point was that I said that um, I was going to cover this whole area with thinset um, because this was solid, implying that I couldn't do it if this hadn't set. But actually, of course, I could. It's just that it's much easier because this is set, then I can hold it really firmly. Uh, the other point is that I'm going to seal off the edges with a little, just by running my finger along them with, uh, with the tile adhesive, just, just so they're, they're nice and neat all the way around. There you have it, my heart mosaic. If you like this video and you'd like to see more, then please subscribe below. <laughs>